Hello and welcome to this quick video to answer a specific question that a Patreon has just asked me. This is Patreon is called Dave. So Dave, this one is for you. However, the reason I'm making the video is this is something that I asked probably about once a month. And it's for all those of you that are relatively new to iNav that are setting up your model and really having problems getting the thing to fly. You throw it in the air and it twists round and crashes into the ground and you just can't seem to get it all working. Now, I spend quite a bit of time making my iNav for Beginners series. Is I'll put a link below to the latest one and show every individual step and also cover a lot of the pitfalls. I've been making these videos for a long time now and I have a pretty good idea of where the common mistakes are made. And this is one that crops up more often than I would like to see. And it makes me sad to think that people are trying to get these planes in the air and on their first maiden flight, smashing them into the ground. And this is one of those situations where when you launch and try and fly the plane in what's called manual mode, where iNav isn't trying to do any correction, it's just passing through the radio controls to the control surfaces, adding the expo and the mixer stuff, and that's pretty much it, it flies fine. But if you put it into angle or horizon or one of those modes where iNav is supposed to give you a bit of support, it spirals into the ground or just dives aggressively or tries to loop and roll and ends up smashing into the ground and breaking into a million pieces. Now, the first thing to know about this is that all of the stabilization modes, right from the simplest, like angle and horizon, right the way up to the more sophisticated modes in something on an iLav plane, like your GPS position hold, your return to home, your ability to fly autonomous missions, and everything else, all use the same setting for how the plane is stabilized. So if you haven't got that set up, then put trying manual will work, but then trying anything else, angle, horizon, acro even, things like the GPS modes are going to crash your plane. So why does that happen? What potential things have you missed? Well, the first thing I would do if you're experiencing these weird problems where you can't get everything working properly is plug your model back into the iNav configurator and move it on the desk and make sure that the virtual plane in iNav configurator moves in exactly the same way. When you lift the nose up, the nose of the virtual plane lifts too. When you bank it to the left, the virtual plane banks to the left as well. That's just confirming that the flight controller has been installed in the default orientation. If it doesn't work that way and things are moving in the wrong direction, then I would stop there and I would fix that using the board alignment tool. In iNav 7 in particular, it's an awful lot easier to sort that out and to match the physical orientation of the flight controller with the way that iNav thinks it's installed. The second big common issue that I see is that the radio controls need to be set up in a very specific way. And that is when all the sticks go to the top right hand corner or the channel values go to their maximum position. Usually when I come and look at this and try and help somebody with this problem, I find that they've reversed one of those channels on the radio to try and fix a problem with a servo moving in the wrong direction. You never, ever reverse a radio channel to fix a problem like that with iNav. You always reverse it in iNav. And that's the next bit. So what you do is once you make sure your radio, all the channel values go to the maximum value when it's in the top right hand position, if some of the servos are moving in the wrong direction, and I pretty much guarantee at least one will be, go into iNav Configurator, figure out which one of those servos are, and click the reverse button, save it, and make sure that that's all working okay. Once you've got that all done, and now the control surfaces are moving in the right direction along with the radio position, perform your high five check. I'll put a link down below to how you do that. Just basically move the sticks on the radio and watch the control surfaces are moving correctly. When that's all working in manual mode, then that's fab. Stick it into angle or horizon mode on the bench. Again, you're probably gonna to have to power your model for this to power the servos, make sure your props are off for safety. When it's in angle horizon, then tilt the model on the table. And what you should find is the control surface when you're doing, uh, like tilting it from side to side, the control surface on the wing that's rising should pop up a little bit. And that's iNav trying to correct for the uncommanded movement to push that wing back down. Similarly with the elevator, as you tilt the tail up, you should see the elevator rise just a little bit as iNav is then trying to get the tail back to the default position that you're asking for on the radio. If that doesn't happen, 
then I would go and check that you have everything plugged in the right way. Particularly the, what the big thing that I tend to find with this is when you have two ailerons, I would maybe swap the two ailerons over where they're plugged into servo four and five or whatever it is on the iNav flight controller. I'd swap them over and see if that fixes the problem. Again, don't go into the radio. Don't can't start swapping things over. And then when you've got to the end of that, you should be good. If the flight controller is orientated correctly, the radio channels are set up and moving in the right direction, you've reversed the servos in iNav so that they move in the right direction along with the radio, and then you've confirmed that the corrective movement from iNav when in angle or horizon mode is trying to correct for that uncommanded movement, then you're going to be good. Again, all of the steps are shown in much more detail in the iNav for Beginners series, so do go and check that out. I tend to find that the problems start occurring when people are watching those videos and they skip parts thinking, oh, I, I know this, this is really easy. Because that it is like building a house. That radio and flight controller calibration is that foundation. And then the first floor is doing the reversing thing. The issue is, is that if you get one thing wrong, then you build a house of cards and you get to the end and then you find that your plane will fly okay in manual mode, but will be horrific in anything else. Dave, hopefully that answers it for you and anyone else that's in this situation. It's kind of handy to have this video to point those people that regularly get into this pickle to. But again, I would recommend if you're struggling with this stuff, I would take a step back and just watch the I Now for Beginners series again. There's potentially other things that you've missed in there, which will be gotcha that will catch you out later too. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.